Hey, welcome to another highly requested tutorial. My name is Murray. I'm gonna show you how to add some glowing lines effects to the text like you see over here. A lot of people asked about it because I've done in the past some glowing lines or just some glowing effects in videos like freehand draw stuff. Um, and I'll leave those in the top right in the cards if you wanna learn how to do those. But I'm gonna show you how to do that in text as well. Uh, if you guys are new and you're interested in sticking around, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Um, it'll also put a lot of time and effort into my tutorial, so the support will really be appreciated. But without further ado, let's jump in. But first, intro. All right, so After Effects, the place where you spend so much of your time and sometimes you don't get anything done, but that's okay. <laughs> So what we have here, obviously you can see it, all the other options. Oh, it's fish again. All right, well, whatever, just ignore them. So you can see all these different options here. And uh, previously I've done tutorials on how to do some kind of fun glowing lines animations like Blotler Media Effect. Uh, what was that? That's what I call him, but Blot Blotler Media on Instagram. He's really good at what he does. And uh, people have been asking me how to do it on text. So this is going to be a really easy tutorial actually. There's a lot of tutorials that I've done in the past which are pretty complicated and advanced. This is kind of more of a beginner's t side of things and uh, hopefully it'll be pretty straightforward. But let's get started. So you can see that there's a bunch of options here and the way you can just get your different options is if, if I just go into this composition real quick and I'll show you how to set them up. But with your with your Saber plugin here, it is a third party plugin, but it is free. You can get it at videocopilot.net. I'll leave a link in the description. But you can just change the look of your effect essentially. I'll get a little bit more into that in a second, but you can see how many options are over here. Let's just go back into this example. You can obviously see there's a bunch of examples. And if I just do a quick preview here, as you can see, there's a bunch of different effects you can get from these and you can customize the look and the accent to each one individually and you can make it as fast as you want or you can make it move slower. Uh, you can also adjust the turbulence and how much the effect kind of wiggles or, or distorts essentially. So there's also a couple other ways you can get this look. So if I just hide this top layer, you can see that just by changing the font, you can get so many different options. It's a very, very powerful effect. Now, this is my favorite here. And if I just go into it, you can see that the uh, the font is gloss and bloom. If in case you're looking for that, in case you're interested in knowing what that font is, because this is one of my favorites. I really love the look of this and it kind of feels a lot like the glowing animations and it feels like it would fit pretty well, as well as this one. Let's see, glamorous. So the font for this one is Shaka Pow Upright. That's a strange name, but there you go. Um, also one of my favorites. Another one is is this one, which is called Pirate Keg Italic. Another strange name. I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of other strange names for, for fonts, but very cool. There's a lot of different ways you can get it to look just by changing the font. So this is just a normal font, which is Roboto, which is a standard font. So again, pretty cool where you can get with different fonts. And I'm just going to show you how to set this whole thing up. Let's just say I have my scene here. I have my footage and I've just typed out my text. I've made sure it's all uppercase by just clicking this button here. Next thing I'm going to do is control Y or I can right click and do a new solid. And I'm just going to call it Saber. And that's pretty much all. Make sure it's a black solid. That's important. We're going to go and drag the Saber plugin onto the new layer. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go down to the customize core, click on Saber and do text layer. Now it's going to essentially have this effect on the text. Now I need to define what text it needs to outline and apply the effect to. So I'm going to go to none and I'm just going to select Murray Frost, which is the number two here. This is the layer that I wanted to kind of conform to essentially is I guess the word. And now obviously it's so bright and intense. So I'm going to just turn the glow intensity down a little bit. And you can see right off the bat, that looks pretty decent. Now I'm going to customize the core a little bit. Let's take it down. It's a little thick. So I think a little bit thinner is pr looking pretty good. And obviously you can adjust the glow speed, which will take the glow down a little bit and actually uh, take a little bit less feather onto the glow. Let's just actually take it up a bit and we can take the bias up, which would make it glow even more. So, I mean, you can crank that up if you want, but I'm going to take that down a little bit. And then obviously there's so many different options here in the presets. Let's just click on fog. 
and default doesn't look as great so you gotta customize it a little and let's take this core down a bit and I'm gonna take the glow speed down and that kind of reduces the the blurriness but it is fog so it's kind of understandable why it's looking a little blurry like that and you can see it's got some nice wavy animation but then if I go to uh, let's just pick another one for fun and you can see you get some pretty crazy effects here let's take the the glow intensity down a bit and you can change the speed to make the kind of afterglow a little different so let's just take the bias let's take it up actually look at that that looks kind of interesting let's take the core size let's take it up I guess and it kind of looks like fire and it's burning and you can turn down that effect as well if you want to so if I go down into the into the glow settings here it's just going to take a bunch of playing around and just I mean you can there's so many options here and it just makes it look different in every way so you can reduce stuff I'm going to go into the distortion up here let's go to the so there's two different ones here there's the glow distortion which is kind of the the glow and the the light emission from the text and then there's the core distortion which is the text itself so let's just go to the core distortion for a sec let's turn the core distortion down let's turn it down all the way so you can see now it's just a flat text if i turn it up a bit you can see that it's going to start distorting a little bit and if i just press zero on my numeral keyboard you can see it does a ram preview and if i just play this back real quick you'll see that it kind of does that distortion but obviously it's going way too fast so you can turn down the wind speed let's let's turn it down to one see how much that interferes so you can see it reduced the core of the the text the the wave waviness to it essentially so that's reduced but obviously the background the glow hasn't reduced in speed let's say we want to reduce the speed so we'll just go to the core distortion under the distortion or sorry the glow distortion here you can lower the distortion amount on the glow the kind of the stuff on the outside of the text and then obviously wind speed here let's take that down to one as well and let's just do a ram preview with that so you can see much slower and it actually looks much better because it's not so all over the place and crazy all right so let's just pretend that we're happy with the result here next thing with this saber layer selected this is the solid that we created i'm going to click the blending mode and i'm just going to do add or you can possibly do screen it just depends on what you want it will look different in every scenario now you can see that the text is underneath here so let's just hide the text for now uh, it's not going to be a big deal because the saber effect is just taking the text here and it's applying it to the saber so we can hide the text and we don't have to worry about this one actually disappearing so if i do a ram preview with that you can see again that's pretty normal and it's just how we had it now one thing you can do here let's just quickly see how this will look if we just do screen or add okay i like add more kind of keeps a lot of the glow in it let's say that i'm happy with all of this now if you want to add a reflection in your scene like on the table you can see there's some stuff reflecting onto it let's say we want the text to do the same thing remember to do the reflection at the very last point because if you change anything on the text here it will not change on the bottom here you'll have to apply changes additionally to the reflection so make sure you have all the positions and the keyframes and all this stuff done to your layer here. So for example, let's just say your end offset here, you add a keyframe to that. If we go to the saber here, we'll just drag that in time and then we'll just take this down to zero. You'll see it disappears, but as you go far into time, it'll kind of reveal itself. Let's do a quick round preview just so you see what that looks like. All right, so you can see it does its reveal. Now, obviously with these keyframes, if you adjust them and you have your reflection down here, it won't update in the reflection. So make sure you have all of the effects done here, then you can do your reflection. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna duplicate the layer here, the saber layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scale it in a, in a strange way. So when you have a reflection, usually it's inverted on the surface that it's reflecting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the scale here, I'm gonna completely invert the scale and I'm gonna drag it down. I'm gonna hold shift so I drag it down on the same axis here. Let's put it on the table somewhere there. And uh, you can even squish it if you want to, kind of add some, some lengthiness to the reflection. And I'm just gonna press T on the keyboard for the opacity, and I'm just gonna take it down a bit. And this is just kind of to how you want it to look. The more obvious the reflections on the table, the more obvious you'll have the text. But if it's kind of subtle, then I'll make the text a little subtle as well. So now if I do a RAM preview, you'll see that it does the same thing. It mimics 
the actual text just like a shadow or reflection would. But yeah, it's relatively straightforward once you understand the Sabre plugin a little bit and it can take you quite a long way. So at its first impression, it's a really great effect. So much you can do with it as you could tell by the video. Uh, lots of different things you can experiment with. Play around with it because you can get it looking completely unique and different and if you mess around with it and get really good at it, your effect will look really cool. So if you guys are interested in sticking around for the future and you enjoyed, consider subscribing. I put a lot of work into my tutorials. The support will really be appreciated. Leave a like, it would really help the channel out. Uh, oh, and also on the store on my website down in the description, you can grab some titles if you want to kind of track your titles into a different scene or follow something to kind of highlight something. Those are on the store. Go ahead and grab those. It'll be down in the description on my shop. But without further ado, yeah, that was a great outro until then. Um, keep smiling and keep shooting. Oh, why is this take so much work? My goodness.